So uh, welcome everyone to the third seminar in the series of Bridging Two Worlds. Uh, the topic of today's talk is system thinking in the age of digital ecosystems uh, presented by Michael von Kutzenbach. Um, but before we begin, we just wanted to go through a few formalities. So firstly, if you could go to the next slide. Uh, what is Mainz? Uh, Mainz is a student-led peer mentoring group here in Bergen. Uh, we're under the system dynamics group here, and we deal with the academic side of student life uh, by offering mentoring, sharing of knowledge. We host guest lectures and generally try to expand the learning opportunities uh, for the system dynamic student and uh, the system dynamicists uh, here. If you could go to the next slide. <laughs> Uh, the System Dynamics European Bergen is an autonomous research group uh, that specializes in modeling. We deal mainly with topics of sustainability, business, energy, and psychology, uh, but all, most people here have very different backgrounds and apply system dynamics in different ways. Uh, but the main focus of the group here is system dynamics, as that's what uh, unites us all here. Uh, we offer a two-year program in English. Uh, so if you are interested or if you know anyone that's interested, please scan the QR code uh, or save and check out the link that will be sent out uh, later in the chat. Uh, Fernando. Um, from my side, I just want to invite you all for the conference. Um, so the International System Dynamics um, conference this year is taking place in Chicago, but you can also attend online if you cannot make your way to the US. And we're going to meet each other from 20. 3rd of July to 27th of July. Uh, and you can already register and also submit your work to present at this, the conference. You can go to systemdynamics.org slash conference and got, uh, get all the information um, you want and you need. Uh, and don't forget to follow us on uh, Twitter, on Instagram for more information related to system dynamics and other information of the community. Um, and I also would say, suggest you if you intending to learn more uh, about system dynamics modeling the summer school is a great way to do that so um so we have two different levels for of the summer school the intro and the intermediate uh and it's happening just before the conference and the first half of july um and today is no difference we're going to be using uh, the poll everywhere to collect the uh, questions throughout Michael's presentation. And so if you guys want to get used to the platform, you can scan this QR code, um, or maybe you can go to the link uh, in the chat and let me just place it there. Yeah, so you can click this link in the chat and meet us here in this platform. Uh, and I do have two questions for you before we get started. Um, and the first question that I have is, where are you joining us from? And, uh, you know, the System Dynamics Society community is a worldwide community, and we usually, usually cover a lot of time zones, and I hope to see this diversity again here today, uh, and I'm seeing already some people replying. Um, I see people from Pakistan and Belgium, um, Central US, I guess that is, uh, Texan, Brazil, Malaysia. Um, and if you don't know how to answer this question, you can go here. There's a link, pollapp.com slash STS polls 877. Uh, I'll give you guys a little bit more time. I see some people replying in the chat also from Romania, from Colombia and Chile, uh, Perth. I have a really good friend in Perth and Western Australia. Um, where else? Ireland. So you see, we have people from everywhere, all continent. It's just such a beauty of the in system dynamic society having you all here. And the second question that I have for you today is, uh, let's move forward this. Oh. What's your system dynamics knowledge level? So we have here five options. Just wanna get a sense of um, how how much you know about system dynamics this day. So if you have a very basic knowledge, you're a beginner, uh, intermediate, advanced, or expert. Um, so in these five categories, uh, which one do you consider yourself? Let me see here, responses. <clears throat> so a lot of people saying they are intermediate. Um, we do have a few experts and advanced folks in the room and some very basic, which is good to have here. Um, it's always have, good to have a diverse crowd when you're presenting. So I think, Michael, you wanted to, to get to know a little bit of your audience today. We have definitely the most people here, the majority of people are intermediate. So they know a little bit about system dynamics and system dynamics modeling. Uh, thanks for answering. Uh, I think I'm going to hand over to you again, Edwin. 
Yeah. So uh, it is my honor to introduce you to the speaker uh, today. He is inspired by the concept of balancing business and profitability and sustainability in terms of uh, environmental and social well-being, a topic that has never been more relevant in today's day and age. Uh, he believes that true sustainability can only be achieved through understanding different perspectives and cooperating towards common goals. Uh, he started by studying forest environmental science uh, before receiving his PhD in informal networks. Uh, currently, he is a business mediator, lecturer, project manager in Germany, Norway, and Switzerland. Uh, without further ado, I think, uh, please put your hands together for Michael. I think you just can share your screen, Michael, whenever you want. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the introduction. Um, I cannot share. Uh, yeah. Maybe because I'm trying. Can you try now? Yeah, yeah here you go. You can see it. Okay, thank you very much. A warm welcome from my side. Um, I have planned to take you through three parts. I will share a little bit my um, background, my thinking, um, maybe also my intentions roughly 30 minutes, then maybe you have a break. Um, then second part is uh, how I have applied it, um, trying to learn more um, about how well my way of looking at the world and using system thinking, system dynamics um, is uh, connected to the real world. And then of course, I also got asked to reflect and discuss with you what kind of challenges and maybe also opportunities system thinking has in and with um, business. Um, the last two parts maybe will also cover one hour. Uh, we agreed on that we are flexible and you, we will adapt to your needs. Um, maybe to my background, um, I'm working at the Applied University in Northern Western Switzerland as a professor for digital management, and I'm mostly interested in the intersection between new technologies and digital transformation and what kind of impact sustainability that has. Um, they're the term BM. I have asked terms that means business model innovation for sustainability. I will come to that later. The idea is at least not just um, to accelerate or use the big power of technology. Um, and I think we are living in a very turbulent world. Um, always new ideas and uh, innovations are popping up. The question is, can we use that to make the world a better place? Um, of course, the the big, big question mark is what is better, but um, I um, think that we have powerful technologies. And I also asked chat GDP, um, what chat GDP means. And um, the answer is interesting to read because I think partly it also maps my um, current question. It says that we have powerful technology. However, it is important to know that um, it is not a panacea, you know, and it needs to reflect in the ethical, legal, and social considerations. And that's again where I think system thinking or system dynamics might adapt. Maybe a little bit background on what I define as digital transformation. Um, that is uh, a definition from Anrun and Kiron, where they say, okay, digitization is about formatting analog into digital formats and based on that, doing digitalization. So coming up with new or different business models, which then lead to a digital transformation. And I very much like this kind of definition because it puts digital transformation in in the intersection between business organizations and institutional societies. So it's not just that the organization needs to digitally transform, it is that the organization needs to digitally transform because and um, with the changes in its environment. And that's, I think, um, not always uh, also addressed. We all talk about the industrial revolution, the first, the second, the third. Uh, nowadays, they claim we are in the fourth uh, digital uh, industrial revolution, where it's mostly about cyber physical systems. However, I think the thinking behind that, it's still very much according to the first, second, and maybe third industrial revolution. And we are mostly in the two earlier stages, digitization and digitalization, concerning to the definition I had, meaning 
Um, we use the power of new advanced technology, calling it digital uh, technology, but we usually do what we did in the past. So we are improving um, processes. We are speeding up, accelerating what is there. But from my view, we really, really challenge um, why we do what we do. Um, and that's maybe also not um, the advantage of technology. So that's maybe still um, the human mind or we are missing. And that's a little bit what I'm into because I think uh, what we realize is that everything is accelerating. Some people talk about the ex exponential age. And here again, I um, recommend this as a, as a home reading from Asim Asa. He claims there are three mutual reinforcing factors. The one is the power of learning by doing. The other is the increasing interaction of combination of new technologies. And the third one is the emergence of new networks of information. And I think uh, what we address very well is that we are aware of that there are networks of information. Um, what we somehow got as is maybe combining these new technologies with what we do, what we think, or what I think we still not leverage is the power of learning by doing. And I think that's something where maybe system thinking can help. The second issue is um, because I think we are really entering in a complex dynamic systems because one aspect of the digital transformation is that we get more and more interdependencies. We are uh, building networks, not just the physical ones we had already in globalization. And that's maybe is still challenging us because I think, and I like this picture very much, we have advanced technology, but we have a maybe outdated culture or social view on how the world is uh, moving. And um, I like the article from Rima and colleagues because he takes two examples. Um, uh, no, he has one example. Um, that's the music industry. And I also grew up and um, I know vinyl plats, I know CDs, and I also was using Napster as I was in Norway doing my exchange. Um, and nowadays, nobody is really collecting physical recordings anymore. It may, may be old fashioned people like me who still have some CDs, but nowadays you listen to music which is streamed to you. And um, that's the change in digitalization. But what I think it's even more uh, uh, changing is in the old world, concerned with physical recordings, we mostly looked for improving the recording and the quality of the recording. And my dad would not listen to the music sometimes streams because the quality is too bad. Nowadays, it's less about the quality, it's more about at any time, any place, uh, listening to whatever kind of music and maybe even get um, entertained advice by what kind of music you should listen. So the, the, the view on what makes up recording and music has totally changed. So has also the industry. And I think that needs something to be considered when we think about sustainability, because nowadays still sustainability is mostly perceived as sustaining something. And I very much like um, the quote from Donella, where she claims too many people hear it as sustaining the world we have now, whereas I really mean fomenting a revolution, because I think um, if it I'm, I, I am also educated as an environmental as a scientist and um, to manage natural resources like forest. So you try to keep these resources uh, sustaining for decades, centuries. While I think that's just one view on innovation and I would love to see a different kind. And I think innovation for sustainability can be plotted on a continuum. On the one side, you may have incremental development innovations, keeping business improving efficiency. On the other side, you may have radical world making innovations. And there's a big difference. The one leads to change in degree, um, efficiency improvement, optimization. You, it will be incrementally better and you will move forward. Um, on the other side, it is change in kind, and that leads to something totally different, novel 
issues. And here again, I picked up the example of the music industry, same um, time durations. Uh, it's also about something like 40, uh, 50 years, like in the car industry. In the car industry still, we have four wheels, we have a steering wheel, it even looks um, from the shape the same. Why in the music industry, it totally changed to something very different and you rather find the old incumbents anymore there. Um, and I, I'm, I'm questioning how well we as dynamics are prepared um, leading through this kind of change. That's the one thing. Um, that's why I'm sometimes moving a little bit in my uh, presentation too. That's the meta view. And the other is also how well um, our organizations are prepared or how good can we support them, not just reflecting on change in degree and what that might uh, be about, but also considering change in kind so that they will be continuously renew and um, uh, be part of world making innovations. And I think the um, today, what system thinking is mostly doing, and also as I stated earlier, business model BMI is mostly focused on is on this incremental developmental innovation. So we are really good in, in spotting a, a given this and then thinking about, okay, uh, where might be potential or where might be a place to intervene to uh, optimize the system or uh, the behavior of the system. And taking this picture from Fischer and Rehas, um, they differentiated that there might be two different perspectives on explaining systems change. The one is more uh, causality oriented on the left and the other is more teleologically oriented. And, and they um, combined that with the places to uh, intervene from Donella Minos and said, okay, look, there may be something called like shallow leverage for systemic change. And on the right, there might be deeper leverage uh, possible. And I would argue the majority of work in system dynamics, and I know that's a little bit black and white, but my uh, intention today is also to uh, challenge your worldview is um, we spot underlying causal explanations for what is going on there. But we have a hard time to incorporate or uh, to, to also explain how the new, the, the, uh, the, the co-emergent properties are popping up. And um, I think one of the challenge or here, um, um, good work. I think uh, that's um, how um, recent work supports business model innovation. Um, on the uh, left, working with the business model canvas uh, framework, explaining how certain things in certain segments affect other elements in other segments, and also uh, explaining why we see a certain result. Um, on the right, we see work by um, Kim Warrens, where he also um, addresses that maybe the way or approach to system dynamics should be innovated, suggesting a more um, agile way and, and, and more leaner way to come up, and also question if um, we maybe not just model the system. However, I think that's, that's good, that's um, cool work. Mm, but still, I'm I'm not sure how the new is coming in, and um, that leads me again back to if we consider the technology um, for something which can really disrupt what is there. And I like the quote from Ehrenfeld where he says that just unsustainability is measurable. And I see lots of activities where we are concerned about um, um, making less unsustainability possible. I'm questioning how well we are there um, to really go forward for sustainability, and in particular when sustainability is mostly aspirational. So um, the question is then for me, okay, where do I find possibilities or um, also um, support by system dynamics to make this uh, aspirational um, intention or the um, aspirational vision um, possible to, to develop. And um, again, Donella, who, who challenged that um, 
doing system dynamic work uh, is not just about calculating. But what I quite often see is that um, we very much discuss the equations and we dig deeper into a given system, want to do that better. Um, and of course, we also need to publish, uh, we need um, to, to, um, to, to improve our reputation and visibility, and that's an easy way. However, I, I would love also to see um, the uh, aspirational side more stressed, which means that um, also, as Donella states here, the compassion, vision, and mortality needs to somehow um, include it into this. And um, in the article from Fischer and Riechers, they also, as stated in the beginning, say, look, there are other interventions possible which uh, go for um, deeper leverage points, meaning there's design and intention. And in the article themselves, they state that if we really would like to see um, how certain goals in a system um, make uh, uh, the um, uh, underpin um, uh, the paradigm, then it is essential also to think about the normative direction or um, um, the teleological part of it. And I think for um, that, I know when we do modeling, um, and I'm a big fan of um, uh, group model building, for example, the modelers team, I think they are quite a lot thinking about, yeah, how do you see the world? And is it like that? And then they map what they believe it should be like. And then maybe they also try to simulate. And based on this, they have a real learning experience because they may uh, they, they, they make experience based on them. They can reflect and learn. While I doubt that that is um, happening um, with, um, not always happening with the client uh, part because um, they usually are not too much challenged quite often in the um, development of a model. Uh, it's more like you help them to spot certain things and maybe also they have a very limited school of um, uh, um, potential uh, causal loop relationship they can go from. So the question for me is um, talking about, okay, if we do business model innovation and we would like to get system dynamics used for radical world making innovation, how can this be done? And, and I think that maybe, and that's also an, uh, just um, an hypothesis right now from my side, um, if we could extend or add uh, critical systems heuristics to system dynamics, this would uh, broaden um, the way how we maybe spot, map, um, and also explore business model innovation for sustainability, making it easier to discuss different perspectives, um, acknowledging that there might be a more operational um, thinking as well, a more visionary thinking. Um, if we talk about system dynamics, we always um, uh, claim that, yes, uh, we, we would like to um, have a dynamic problem um, and, and something like a, a purpose of the system as well. We try to spot the um, uh, um, a chain uh, uh, of a, a change of, of certain um, physical things going through, calling that um, operational thinking. But for me, that's I would love to have a stronger emphasis on that. We really would like criti um, to to critically reflect on. Uh, who is part of this um, modeling, why um, we have this kind of boundary set, who else might be needed, or what kind of facts um, are there or not there. And that's particular when we do um, uh, critical system analytics that it helps us to somehow systematically check what's here. And we have an empirical uh, selective perspective where we ask ourselves, what is there? Um, and um, there again, we think about, okay, what is relevant and um, what might lead or what uh, we can maybe leave out. The same 
uh, is suggested to do for the normative selection. So again, here we have something like, I would call it the causal perspective and the more teleological perspective, the normative one, when we ask for the ought to be. At the same time, I think um, it gives us the possibility to also reflect on a more um, uh, meta level uh, why we do what we do and uh, what kind of facts are there, which might be more rational oriented, and what kind of values um, might be there, more um, human um, centered. Um, and that is done for is mode and, uh, and the ought to be mode. And what I would love to do more of, and I'm also later explaining you what we did, and I'm in the last part intended maybe to say you what kind of challenges, or that's also part of the second one, uh, my kind of challenges I'm facing. I would like to do more of this. I would like to use a more learning oriented approach either um, based on an adaptive loop or a holding uh, loop where usually business or managers are good in keeping things stable. Um, and I think that can also be mapped by system dynamics. So this is this part where I say, okay, this is maybe more causal. When we see what is happening today, we all um, agree on that it is something like a VUCA world, it's getting more dynamic. And what managers are usually doing, they and say, okay, let's have a leadership meeting. We do a strategic uh, workshop in order to somehow make sense of what's going on. And that is this more visionary um, thing where they spot. However, the link between managers keeping stability and predictability up, that's, that might be more the administrators, and those who are more thinking about uh, our visionary uh, approach to what's going on is quite often broken. And I think um, both can be strengthened if we are, this is good with system dynamics, here we can use critical uh, uh, system heuristics for what is going on. And then it might be possible also to use uh, critical systems heuristics for asking ourselves, okay, how might world breaking or world making I do is look like this is then leading to more what is our um, aspirational vision, what uh, would we like to see? And this is real pioneering work. And of course, what we do by that, we try again to, to look for, um, to, to make sense out of a chaotic environment into a more complex, which still is not complicated, meaning we don't know how the processes need to look. But again, here, we might use system dynamics um, saying, okay, if these are our ideas, how can we um, uh, operationalize them so good, so well, that again, we can exploit them, providing the basis for this more conversational activities, which usually then leads to more stability. And that's for me where I would love to see, um, or that's um, what I'm also trying to do, um, to combine the power of uh, system dynamics um, um, good visualization of what's going on with the power of critical system heuristics, challenging why I see the world as I see, maybe even why I perceive the system as the perceived, uh, um, the, the perceived system looks to me, um, and and then providing an, an, an a reflective discussion about how is it towards how ought it to be. Unfortunately, that's what I then uh, can discuss in the second part about. Um, that's also just an aspiration from my side. Reality looks much more um, um, more concrete, leaner, because it's a hard time to get that into business and let them following this kind of approach through uh, the way. So this is what I try to do or um, putting it, um, and that, that's my ambition to, to support the world um, by coming up with world making innovations for sustainability, because I think um, just 
telling and I that's I know that we have SDGs but that's again for me a manage, um, managerial thinking where we um, try to define the to be and as is and then identify the gap and then we we think about we we close that that's an incremental developmental um, aspiration why I would love to have a more um, a radical idea and therefore we I from my view uh, leaning towards Peter Singhi, we need to get better in learning um, what might be possible and how we would love to see the world. And um, learning is based on uh, experience which are reflected. And there I see potential using system dynamics when we also take the time to reflect on that. That's uh, my point I want to make. Um, and that's uh, leading to my um, um question um to engage a little bit in a discussion maybe uh, system dynamics also needs to get a little bit more loopy um or crazy than just we claim for the world outside system dynamics uh, circular economy is claiming they are uh, circular loopy while i think they're also mostly technical focusing uh having said that um, i would say I'm happy to answer questions um, and dig into you or into a dialogue with you. Sounds like a very good plan. Let me share my screen so we can look at the answers. Can you see some of the, the questions? Sorry. Can you see my screen? Yeah. So start with the bottom one. I don't know if we can see in big enough. Can you see in big yeah, enough? Yeah, I can see that. Nice. So the first one was leaning by doing. Isn't it that exactly the driver of the first industrial revolution? Because you mentioned that. Uh, so I'm not quite sure how what the um, the questions was here uh, related to system thinking, system dynamics. Uh, but maybe if the person that's wanting wanting to, to to deep dive into into that, that could be very interesting to hear him speak if. If the person is up to it, you can obviously unmute yourself and, and ask maybe more details. Uh, if not, we'll move on to the next question. Um, maybe I can respond to the first question, how I yeah. um, understand mm -hmm. it. And um, uh, I'm quite sure that we don't want to have radical change. That's why we have such a powerful discipline called management science, which keeps or which provides um, stability and predictability. And that's, I would say, why we do so well um, in most places. Because if I go and order shoes in, in, in the size 45, I expect that I also will get the same size of shoes that I got last time going for shoes of uh, 45. Um, still, I think if we really acknowledge that um, we are in a an, an dynamic in, 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 in system, then there is no static uh, environment. So everything is changing. And then the question is, um, can I lead, command and control this change? Or do I need to be more um, open uh co-creation co-merging oriented and what i think is that the majority loves to keep the world as it is that's um, i also love to go out into nature and enjoy the nature i have still i think um there's a lot going on which not necessarily means um that that is that cons um, and and i think donella miros made in his um in their book a good point saying that if you would have asked people in the uh, agriculture revolution if they would like to change, the majority would also maybe have said, no, we love how it is. There are problems we have to deal with. The same happened to the people in the industrial revolution. Um, and now we are facing the next one. And that's why she also claims maybe we are already on our way to do that. I'm not sure if I answered the question with that, but um, that was. Um, it worked for me. Response. Definitely worked for me. Um... Let's move maybe to, to the to the. I don't know how you see my screen. Can you see my sort of arrow? Uh, if you if we go to out sound, very objective and honourable. But is the reality what I want? What I like? 
uh, which is highly subjective and biased. So the fourth one down. Yeah, I think uh, definitely um, that is biased. Um, that's, I think, also one of the challenges, uh, challenges doing system dynamics modeling, because uh, if, if I have to come up with a model, I'm always interpreting what I'm seeing there. And I'm, 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 uh, uh, modeling um, my perception of the world um the the, the question is um, this this ought to be is uh, for me not just on how i perceive the world it's maybe also who i need to include in the discussion about the world and and the majority if you talk about um uh, research and development innovation sometimes even change that is done in a very secret environment you um, do that with your secret research and development team with your leadership team you in, um, develop the next innovation and rarely the last maybe decade or so we talk about open innovation which is a more structured approach to also integrate other stakeholders and the ought to be for me is also related to that the one thing is what do i see and what others see so what is there i perceive as important and what ought to be that can reflect and challenge my own worldview versus who else need to be there and also may have a different view on what um, he or she is seeing there and then uh, still keeping um, uh, a co-creative mind or a, a setting then i think something very different is possible to emerge um, which might be different to my ought to be but that's where I think learning will take place because then I have the possibility to go out of my comfort zone into something more like a learning zone. Um, and of course, it should not go as far as that I am in a panic or in a crisis so that I again ask for um, just do what there is. But that's where I see uh, the ought to be has potential um, to be beneficial or add something to the discussion. We also do ought to see in, uh, in in simulating scenarios with um, business models. Usually, when we run simulations, we can say, "Okay, we have a given system and change one variable," but that's mostly in a given system, and we are not willing to really to to disrupt the model system. So we are cling we are, we cling with our model, and maybe we forget that modeling the doing is something different than falling in love with the model. Um, I know that's putting it to the extreme as well, but that's what I quite often also experience myself. I love what I have came up with and have a hard time if somebody claims that that is not fitting uh, the situation or the, the intention to get to, to let go of what I have invested time and effort in. But that's for me also part of ought to be and um, contradiction to what is so yeah i think that's interesting also reminding sort of the the importance of learning while modeling in the parts of which our approach as you were mentioning earlier sort of plays into that book to be and learning from others can be very interesting um the the next question here is quite interesting the the sort of before last from the bottom um does the system have a purpose or does the system deliver an outcome which may or may not correspond to system designer's intent, depending on how well the system is designed and implemented, in the clarity or otherwise of the designer's own thinking. You did already talk a bit about this, but maybe go deeper into this. Uh, using the definition from Donella Minos, I would say, yes, a system should have a purpose. Uh, however, the question is, what is the system? um and that's maybe also discussion between hard and soft system thinking that there's some claim to be able to define and um and spot and maybe uh, map and optimize a, a given system and then they see everywhere systems while the other one is more like as saying okay um, why do we see the world as it is and the, the point is Mm, does the assistant deliver an outcome? Mm, I would say definitely um, it, it, it delivers an outcome. The question is, if, if I take myself in the position of a manager, my, my, one of my um, goals is 
to design and, 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 and make the system working. That's called managing. Um, and by that, I have the chance to introduce incentive systems. And some of these interventions hopefully lead to the outcomes I would like to see. The problem is that there are always a negative, um, or, or that's wrong, and that there are side effects, unintended side effects. Mm, that's where I think maybe system dynamics need to get a little bit more loopy or crazy uh, in that thing that from my perspective, we as system dynamic people, we usually tend to avoid unintended consequences, side effects. While when I listen to people from the exaptation discipline, which is discussed in the innovation management, they even claim that the unintended bears the potential for um, new emergent properties. And um, if you go back in evolution, there really was an intended outcome that, for example, the bird should be able to fly. Um, that happened that um, evolution was developing movers, uh, moving forwards and by that um, it was possible for birds to uh, develop uh, feeders and uh, be able to fly. And I'm not sure um, that's exactly where I think if we could predict the future, then maybe we could also lead and command and control it. But I think we need maybe to be more open and, and let go and let come what might be possible, still uh, trying uh, to be aware of what uh, are the challenges. I'm not against um, that we have physical boundaries. I'm qu quite aware about planetary boundaries. But I think in between the planetary boundaries and what I do, there's a, a, a huge potential of what kind of outcomes I can produce depending on how I organize my management, my uh, way of working, which again, I would say the way of how the economics is running is designed, maybe not consciously, but it is designed by some people, uh, organizations. Um, and the question is, can that be done better? Uh, designing uh, the creativity, okay. Yeah, that, that perfectly answers the question. I saw that there's directly a follow-up question to what you were just talking about. So maybe we can go on that one. Uh, unintended consequences like an accident or no evidence of poor initial thinking. The first one on the list. In this question, it is claimed that unintended consequences are bad. Um, and I would say that might be right, considering that we would like to keep the system on or uh, to produce the outcomes which is which the system is currently producing. But if we acknowledge that everything is somehow dynamic and um, uh, all my activities might lead to certain uh, outcomes which I cannot handle with the existing praxis and 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 and. and uh, and routines I have, then this also bears the potential for coming up with new ideas. Back to my example on the music industry, um, it was a PhD thesis, I think, which came up with the MP3 technology, which at that time was an unintended consequence because nobody really knew what to do with that. Just because there were other ingredients available like internet, uh, a young company looking for business models. Um, this company, uh, I, I guess it was uh, Apple, were able to make something like an intended consequence out of that because um, nowadays you pay for getting uh, music by uh, stream to you. Um, and, and and therefore we need this kind of technology. But under the given system, if you would have asked somebody who is uh, producing um, CDs in a in a in a, in a, in a music study, they would have said, "Oh no, that's that's totally unintended to us, uh, or negative to, uh, to what we do here because it's it's, it's disrupting us." But it built the potential to come up with a different world. And I think I'm for me. Um, sustainable business model means that we need to move into a different world with again we'll have problems so and some problems you will not solve you might dissolve and even we get better technology i doubt that we will be capable of knowing everything which is a little bit the dream i would say of artificial intelligence that 
just more information will make a better um, communication information flow possible. And by that we can steer and, and control better, which I believe, or oh, maybe I even hope, and I'm also happy to uh, learn more about that, um, won't be the case. So there are still things we do not know uh, we will be surprised by. So that's the unintended consequences. They might be an accident to the existing system, but there might be also the necessary ingredient to come up with real radical world making innovations. That would be my short answer to it. <laughs> short and long answer combined. Very good. Um, maybe we could go yeah, with the first one that popped up here. Does not, uh, sorry, does not that open more opportunities for multi type models to come into play? Does not that open? Um, I'm not quite sure what multi-type models multi -type mean. Yeah. Um, that's a term I haven't heard so far. Me neither. To say. Um, if I would interpret that as we have a model which looks from different perspectives on the uh, given situation, that's something I would like to appreciate. I don't see that... Um, as something which um, should not happen. I would, so for me, um, modeling or system dynamics should be mostly concerned about increasing opportunities or um, um, uh, possibilities for dealing with a given situation and not, so it, it should open the discussion and then rather closing it, which I still see quite often that we do modeling in order to come up with the best answer. Um, I think that's appropriate for somebody who is in the position to administrate a given system. This person would like to know how to better or what is the best practice to 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 do digital transformation, for example. And then we and that that also works with an understanding about that there is a linear change possible, meaning that I know the to be and the as is, and I can close this gap. But in in in, in circumstances where we call it messy or, or wicked problem, which, for example, I would put digital transformation as well as sustainability under, there is no best praxis or best fit. There's a, um, a, a range of possibilities and we unfortunately never will know which consequences would have um, uh, taken part if we would have chosen a different direction because um, there are too many uh, stakeholders usually involved and um, it is too too messy to say this is the problem because if back to my example of mp3 technology um, yeah at that time they had a technology but no problem um, so there were no fix to something and there, in the beginning, there were even not a solution how to use it because nobody really knew how to uh, to 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 uh, apply it, and they needed other um, possibilities, other views, and just because they came together, something alternative emerged. I'm not sure if that is answering the question. So I would say I hope that there are more opportunities um, discovered. Nice. That is part of multi-type models. I don't know. Well, it definitely answers the opportunity part. Um, maybe one last question before we go. We go for a little break, a short break. Um, let's go for this one. Should we try to reduce the complexity of a system before we aim towards a change, or propose solutions to complex systems which might sometime increase the complexity of the system further over time? So, should we try to reduce? Or propose solution to systems that might be making it more complex. Um, yeah, again, that depends on um, what you would like to to get out, and I think that heavily depends on the kind of problem you face. I would say, uh, if you, but there is complexity in um, that word, so I would say. Mm, 
if you reduce the complexity, so you tamp the system, then you're already modifying the system according to your perspective and also your bias, which I think it's not bad because we all do that in order to, um, to, to, to be actionable, to do things. The question is, okay, uh, what is my, my, my job here? Um, and um, I would, I, 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 what I, for example, uh, um, talking about business model innovation, we quite often hear design thinking there. And that's definitely something where we try to make the system more um, easy because we focus already on the customer. It's, it's a customer centristic approach. Even it might have a, a converge and diverse approach. Um, breathing uh, complexity or not mm, the question is does it help me and i think if i'm looking for an easy answer then reducing complexity is appreciated but if i look for um, alternative answers i would say we always need to increase possibilities and that usually leads to more complexity and I also think um, chaotic situations are not bad um, as long I, um, I'm, I'm capable of, of, of spotting opportunities and um, ways through. So I think everything somehow goes, if I learn something new, the world is chaotic to me. And just because I, I, I can reflect on the experience I make in this chaotic world, I am able to maybe move it to a more complex or complicated world with hopefully uh, learning how to drive a car. In the beginning, maybe everything was chaotic. But in the end, you develop sufficient routines that I'm hopeful you are not sleeping while driving. But in the end, you don't think about if you change gears. So it's 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 somehow very and you develop a routine. However, that's in an environment which is very much stable or predictable. So uh, even if you go from UK to Germany, you change sides of driving, um, then maybe uh, that puts you again into a more complex situation and you need again to reflect a little bit to make it more complicated, um, understandable, uh, clear course and uh, effective relationship than it might be. The, the problem I see is that that's also my concern uh, in, 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 in the, you know, of my talk that we move very much to the simple reductionistic world and I would even argue that system dynamics had a big interest in making the world easier which is understandable but I think right now the majority of problems is not it's not a technical problem so it's not we don't have a routine to that the majority of other not the majority um the 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 most important um problems are wicked or or, or messy so um we, we we don't know how the future will look like even we have very powerful technology and maybe um, uh, even every week or months there's coming up a new startup with a new technology they claim will disrupt our environment so um, how can i cope with that situation applying tools um, which are designed and, and maybe even further designed for um, coming up with the best solution for a somehow um, uh, understandable, predictable world. And, and, and there I think um, if system dynamics would like to, um, to, to, to keep up with the development. That's why we have design thinking, for, for example. They said, look, we will have an answer to you. We will help you. That's why everybody's jumping on this um, move. While I think there are also definitely um, disadvantages and, and that that's a very limited approach, but taking the people with on the more advanced approach saying system dynamics, they mostly are looking for um, a model which helped them to make better predictions. They mostly not look for 
learning opportunities like they know from a design sprint. Um, and that's for me, how can we balance this disadvantage that yes, we are good in developing models so we can better explain what is operationally happening, but at the same time, we can contribute to a, a more messy chaotic situation and um, let people also, or we, we facilitate them in, in coming up with new ideas, which I think mostly design thinking is intended to do. And I, I'm not discussing a bit about the uh, benefits and disadvantages of design thinking. There are also plenty, but what I would like to emphasize is that um, we had limits to growth, which was one um, that was the prominent, or we got, everybody knew about system dynamics, um, but that's 70 years ago. And, and I'm still happy reading the books, but also uh, in that time, Donella Milos realized that that's why she came up with this. Um, we just need, or we, we only can dance with a system. We realized that yeah, maybe there's something else needed, but I still feel that um, we maybe also need to innovate how we do system dynamics more, or um, and then we may also need to be more open for disrupting. Um, the the way we do that and maybe also say okay if we don't do this what else could we do or what is working what is not working that's um why i'm here huh? <laughs> wonderful wonderful that's a lot of good words a little break could be good to freshen out the brains to get a little coffee um and then we'll we'll, we'll get back with michael and he'll, he'll talk to the, the sort of the experience that you you worked with the project in mind that's that was the idea michael right yes exactly Wonderful. Then let's go. Let's let's come back at five past the hour. Is that good yep. for everyone? So we got a ten minutes break, and uh, we'll join back here. Perfect. See you. See you, see you all very soon. Are possible? Um, is possible? Uh, we were running a two years project called uh, Think Tank Business Model Innovation at our um, institute, which was mostly based on design springs leaning towards design thinking even. So we try to incorporate um, uh, a more um, system thinking oriented approach. And having done so, um, I also tried to um do a little bit more um, system dynamic systems thinking oriented business model innovation for sustainability and for um, and we we had the opportunity in one case um i did together with etienne Rouvette from robert university um and the intention there was to say, okay, how could a more um, or better future-proof business model innovation look like? Uh, we had several meetings before. Um, mostly uh, I worked as the um, intermediate um, engaging with the organization because I, I uh, now the organization. And um, these slides are addressing, or I put these slides in because um, they were somehow the basic for, um, or the fundament for our workshop later. And this is what we intended to do. So we suggested a participatory workshop, applying system dynamics to design future-proof business model innovation. And one of the objectives was to definitely improve multi-stakeholder decision making uh, because um, I think what is happening with the digitalization is that different departments know that maybe uh, there's more pressure um, that they see more or there's more emphasis on, on interdependencies uh, still they just see their piece um, their department their unit as the most important one uh, but realizing that this maybe is insufficient and um, we suggested a um, feedback view to the world and I love uh, the term theory of success because I'm with uh, Drucker assuming that everybody has a, some kind of theory of success why his or her um, organization is successful and um, I also believe that this is mostly an assumption which Raleigh is made explicit um, 
we suggested uh, a different um, uh, uh, stepwise approach to um, to doing that. Um, we wanted to have two steps up front. Uh, the first where we try to better define what is the reason to go for. And then the second step was to also define a somehow dynamic hypothesis. Um, the words were not too much known in um, the organization, but they accepted that. And then we had a draft agenda. That's the last slide down here, um, where we asked for two workshop sessions around three to four hours on site um, the first um, activity at the first workshop was that we wanted to know what kind of trends um, do they spot what is what they sp spot is going on in their environment and from there we would uh, the intention was in a second activity on the first workshop to relate that to um, their strategic aims um, and and then using uh, activity one and two at the second workshop to somehow combine that and check for uh, how does strategic aims affect operational reality um, and how the sketch trends might um, lead to intended or unintended consequences and have an, a reflection activity for should it be I see that it is three times two times three oh um, where we then um, the intention was to uh, use um, critical systems heuristic oriented like okay uh, what do you see um, as it is and how ought it to be again going back to the um, mapped model or the uh, simulations um, reality looked a little bit different because they said yeah two times um, four hours on site uh, is too much um, they asked us if we could do that in three hours online as well. Um, and we said, yeah, okay, we can do that um, online in three hours. But um, this, of course, might lead to less um, in-depth discussion. Um, and they said, yeah, that is fine for them. Um, uh, their um, intention mostly is to get the big picture. It was done at the end of the year they wanted to use that um, to give the leadership team the possibility again to check in to what was discussed in the organization uh, what were the requests from uh, the organization to the leadership team um, on for example cutting costs and other uh, uh, intentions and how they could um, um, still see the bigger picture what is going on and maybe think about um, alternatives um, having a more strategic um, um, view on um, what is going in before they uh, went into the uh, Christmas holiday. Um, we used um, uh, Miro for that and, and you see we have here somehow four blocks and I will dig into these four blocks in, in detail and I'm happy to answer questions um, afterwards. Uh, even so, I cannot tell you what industry and, and company is it about. But um, we had planned to, in this three hours, to have a 10 minutes into where we once again wanted to emphasize what is um, a series of success. Uh, what do we mean by that? Um, into, once again, saying who is Etienne and me, and then um, saying, okay, we will come with, a, or the intention is to, to show you a systems diagram. And I liked uh, the drawing from Goodman, how a systems diagram for filling up a glass could look like. And then again, uh, we had a few words on what is Kuse loop um, drawing um, polarity to again emphasize then if there's a plus that is um, not because we like it or um, wish to have that, but that is a mathematical uh, understanding that um, if we add a plus then an increase in A leads to an increase in B, something I guess you know. Um, 
the other uh, steps have been that we wanted to show them the theory of success, um, which has been mapped at that time, then ask them for what kinds of trends uh, they see. Uh, we have planned the coffee break and then a reflection part and a short wrap up at the end. Um, the intention in the beginning was to do really a um, uh, group model building with them uh, in the workshop due to the time limitations we decided differently we had the possibility to meet three times with one of the leadership team um, who was more strategically oriented to discuss um, the um, the context and uh, how he uh, would assume a theory of success um, so that we could map that. And um, it's not too well to see because there are some details and I'm not allowed to share. But um, in the meeting itself, we um, had a, a, a stock and flow chain, um, which were derived from the interviews with uh, one of their um, teammates um, in these three meetings up front. Um, and that then we connected that to a reinforcing loop. And this reinforcing loop had two balancing loops added. That's uh, what you see here. This is a reinforcing loop, which again is connected to balancing loops where they could connect well with. So they saw that, yes, that's, mm, that's a good um, uh, replication of their situation. Um, and in the um, construction of this theory of success, we also um, moved from in the beginning, we really wanted to do a group model approach also with this um, uh, single person in the interviews. But we realized that it would have taken us too much time. So we were happy that we could um, map the um, uh, flow and stock uh, chain. And then I decided, uh, because um, I know a good source that's uh, from Dennis Sherwood, it's called uh, uh, Strategic Made Visual Using System Thinking, where you have a lot of causal loop drawings. And I thought mm, one of them is close to the situation we see here. We modified that and then we mapped that with our stock and flow chain. And at the end, we also integrated three change initiatives um, to that. And then we asked them, okay, does this situation, this system uh, diagram represents your situation from a strategic point of view? And they could make comments in the, um, in the um, chat. Um, and then uh, we modified the um, theory of success model in Venzim. Um, there were just some minor changes generally they agreed on and, and we got the feedback that that was a good representation, very well um, presented and um, they were, um, uh, they appreciated that um, they also got the bigger picture on what's going on there. So the leadership team was um, 12, uh, in total we were 15 people, um, so there have been 12 managers and one HR person. Uh, responsible for making that happen um, from um, all over Europe, um, ranging from Russia to Africa. Um, and they also not too often meet. So I think they also took that as a possibility to, to, to discuss what's going on. And they appreciated that um, they got one unified view on what's going on. And this adapted modified latest version we put into uh, the the middle of the next step in Miro where we the intention was to discuss trends and constraints which were going on and this uh, the constraints were predefined by um, the leadership team um, boss and um, so we had uh, two constraints and we asked them to come up with two additional trends in uh, subgroups. So they had time to, to think about what kind of behavior over time they see. Etienne explained that in the beginning, what um, behavior over time diagram looks like, what the intention is. 
And then um, they were in teams uh, discussing that. We had four teams doing that. And then we moved one of um, the, or one or two of the um, mapped behaviors over time close to the model. And we discussed how they assume um, certain in, uh, relationships between the patterns they are mapping here and the model there. And then discuss with them um, if they agree on that or not. And that was a very fruitful discussion. Unfortunately, 50 minutes is not too much to do that. Um, so um, I, I guess we could have spent half a day doing that, uh, which would have given much more possibility also to um, dig into um, why they draw behavior over time for a certain trend or constraint the way they do. Um, this was not possible to, to um, reflect and maybe even correct uh, what they do and did there. However, um, based on that, again, we took the same teams and asked them to reflect on um, what they um, what is given to them um, um, looking at the um, model. And then also to check in um, what kind of alternative they would love to see. And um, then the third step, uh, what needs to be different. And um, that was very um, fruitful from the discussion in the teams itself, in the subgroups, as well from the outcome itself. So uh, they, they, they were very much um, sensitized um, what the dynamic is and, and also sometimes what is causing. Um, the challenge was a little bit uh, that the majority of their recommendations was uh, just leading to um, a better financial situation, which maybe was too easy um, um, for um, um, the result itself. Um, but they all thought about also what needs to be in place to make that happen, which was mostly done in a, by post-its um, or comments in uh, on the um, space for the team and not so much in um, causal loop drawing. But um, we, we got four different uh, results from the group from each uh, subgroup and um, there were also uh, promising ideas how they could continue or what should maybe done um, differently um, in future based on that. In general, um, the approach was well perceived so we asked them um, do you think this is a valuable uh, way to spend your time um, and as you can read here, the majority really loved um, the possibility to have a different approach, which also visualize uh, what they are doing um, in a way that they could understand that better and also discuss uh, why um, people perceive it differently. From that point of view, I think it was very beneficial to do that. Um, they also were interested in continuing that. So um, that's something we discuss right now, how um, and a follow up could look like. Um, one of the ideas is to, that, to do that with the next level of managers. Um, or um, another possibility is to invite um, different stakeholders or um, um, maybe even an industry um, to that. Uh, which we would love to do. So our intention was more or less to have an open strategy conversation going on where um, different stakeholders could um, raise or could, could uh, elaborate on their view. And by that, um, maybe also um, more possibilities or opportunities would have, uh, be visible. One concern is, and that's also why um, uh, we sometimes are not, um, or I haven't been successful um, positioning this workshop, is that they felt that there was too less action oriented. So they wanted to know more or better what concrete recommendation um, it can be drawn from this exercise. So what should they do differently on Monday morning? 
Uh, that's unfortunately quite often the case. Um, I was also discussing with other organizations um, if they would love to, to do that. And one explicitly said, look, that's all nice, but that's too um, intellectual, too conceptual, and they um, prefer to do that. Um, I think that's okay uh, if you decide in doing unfortunately i would say the majority of them is also just doing and not um uh, taking the possibility that why they do they collect experience and then also um, could learn from this experience and even here they couldn't maybe make some um uh experience which out too much risk or money involved um, but that's definitely one of the um, um, unintended or, or uh, uh, um, um, negative aspects that, um, yes, I think it's very much an intellectual um, discussion. And what also is not easy, but this um, organization appreciated that it is very much um, discussing about the organization itself. Um, they liked it that they somehow uh, got also the possibility to reflect on what they are doing. They even suggested that they would like to um, do that in a, in a bigger group and to, um, to, to, to also connect that to their overall uh, bigger strategy. So that, that was positive. Um, I think one of, of my challenges is that um, if uh, it is working like that, it is and you have a good sponsor, then you can test that. If you have not a sponsor, then it's very, I haven't been successful to do that. And um, the other piece is that the majority um, of people have a hard time to, um, to understand what either causal loop drawing is or even worse, stock and flow drawing. Um, they, they, they get the story, the narrative, and, and can uh, either say, yeah, that's exactly my situation I'm in, but to come up uh, with um, good description um, elements or even um, names of stock and flows themselves, that's not as easy. And um, that's also why we then decided in the beginning um, to move from the, the, the intention or our, our aspiration was that we come we, that we have a conceptual model from the as is situation and then based on the trends and um, the, um, the behavior over time we could then reflect on an to be a conceptual model where we could either add a stock so that we say, okay, there is another element which needs to be considered in the system. We could change a link so that we would say, okay, the connection between, I don't know, um, quality of the physical recordings and uh, the recording itself is no longer existing in the new world. Um, so then we could say, okay, um, we not just can model and, and also simulate how the as is world is moving to the new world we could also discuss um, if that is something we would like to appreciate and um, maybe if, uh, inviting other people who are maybe not part of the um, current system uh, would also had had a beneficial um, views on um, their theory of success, because that's what I assume is important in a digital ecosystem. So um, for me, um, the difference to uh, from today's organization to tomorrow's digital ecosystem is that today's organizations are still very much isolated or fragmented, and they are uh, um, maybe in a loosely coupled system. While the digital ecosystem, due to um, the um, networks and information flows, uh, which the advanced technology is um, um, creating, are more and more dense connected. And then you have to look for um, what is your behavior causing outside your organization, but still within your ecosystem. And uh, to get the feeling for that, I think 
Um, doing systems thinking is a very valuable tool. Ebenso, um, it is not too easy in particular because many people um, do not appreciate, or no, that's wrong. Um, they have a hard time to think differently. So they are very well trained in a material logic, um, driving change, fixing a problem with a clear desired result. Um, but appreciating a feedback um, view where um, maybe it is even a dynamic equilibrium, the outcome, that's very challenging for the, uh, the, the majority of people. And particularly when you move towards organization um, that uh, they are usually incentivized for um, selling more or uh, making things faster, cheaper, um, and, uh, and not uh, for um, generating more destruction or opportunities. So that's a little bit uh, the challenging piece of um, what do we would like to achieve towards how um, easy it is to adapt to the existing world. But more of that later um, in the discussion on pros and uh, Downs on system thinking in and with business. So I'm happy. I'm I'm sorry that in some of the slides I'm not too good to read, but that's uh, because it's a pilot and uh, we had an NDA on that. Um, but if you have questions, um, I can try to answer them. And also, um, if um, yeah, you have more detailed or you, you're looking for more detailed information on how we did that, we can also go for that. Let's go with that. So tons of questions, I'll, I'll hide the ones that you've already answered previously. Um, so hey, I don't think we've answered this one yet, which is related to what you were talking about. So how big can the system we want to study and transform be if we don't want to be overwhelmed and get caught in conflict analysis uh, that may not lead to an operational result? I'm not sure what um, big means in this um, context because I can model the world and I'm uh, my, even in the universe. So I think it can be huge, the system I can model. Uh, I think um, if, if I understand it correctly, then it's more about um, what, what can we model. And I think what, what is a good model, it is a sketch of a situation. So it should be as um, uh, as easy um, to spot the situation, but not miss too much essential details, meaning that um, uh, you should get the main dynamics or um, 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 features uh, represented, like you do if in a, in a, in a, in a, if you if you draw a. Uh, um, um, a, a sketch of a, of a situation, for example, or a caricature. I'm not sure what the English word is. Um, and that's, I think it's a good model. That's also why we tended, um, so our, our struggle was in the given time slot to come up with something where the people could see themselves in at the same time are not overwhelmed by all the detailed information we thought are needed. And that's why um, we, uh, in the end, just had one chain mapped and linked that to a more general description about an ongoing um, um, uh, dynamic, um, which that was not at all detailed, but they could um, connect to this ongoing um, context or dynamic of uh, the, the context. And in the chain, they saw their issue very well represented. And I think that's, that's, maybe a kind of art. Uh, so you need to figure out, I, I doubt that there is a good rational explanation um, how much elements need to be included in a, in a quantitative number um, versus that um, uh, you may even, so I'm not sure. Uh, even there, um, we, we started very ambitious in the wor first workshop and Etienne came up with a very detailed um, first uh, model. And I somehow over um, uh, wrote, uh, I, I, I changed quite a lot and said, look, this is my suggestion of what I got listening to the conversation 
uh, between you and um, the client as well, um, knowing a little bit of the context as an outside. Of course, it's very biased because I reduced a lot of information because I thought they are not relevant and maybe we missed some important information. That is why we then checked uh, in with the participants if they see themselves represented. And unfortunately, uh, with our objective of modeling um, really and, and maybe even running and, and, and simulation, that was not possible given the, uh, the pure model uh, we came up with. So that's how we had to adapt um, on our way uh, to do that. Anyhow, I think the, the real benefit or the, um, the, the big um, um, take home for us was that the people um, um, saw system thinking or system dynamics use and they appreciated that and they they even asked for doing more of that with I think okay um, we did a good job there even so maybe our ambition in the beginning was uh, have been different and we wanted to do more uh, maybe there's a second time uh, and I'm in contact with other organizations. Um, so there might be other possibilities to do that again. Good answer. So I might get into an even bigger project talking about big in the question here. Uh, who knows how it'll end up. Um, here, another one. Are there prior knowledge relationship for system dynamics stock and flow that would make it easy for people to gain understanding for applying models to their situations? Did you have to do that in your workshops, sort of have a very basic course on what is system dynamics and what are the yeah. fundamental ideas? I think that would be definitely beneficial if the people have um, basic understanding about or um, knowledge about what is system dynamics and what does stock and flow and, and causal loop diagrams mean, particular, uh, for example, priorities, which always get messed up. People but a plus there because they think that's beneficial or that's desired. Um, um, we are, um, I'm also doing that with students who are not system dynamics students and never have been system dynamics students in our master uh, on business information systems. And the, the challenging piece is that if you don't have sufficient time to build up some kind of um, meta understanding, it's really challenging for them to jump on that. I think um, what is very, um, many people talk about systems change and systems diagrams, and but what you see usually is more like um, a stakeholder network, um, like um, a visualization of a, of, of, of a certain situation or context but nothing where you could say, okay, there is either a cause, a cause and effect relationship mapped, or it is really um, something where you say, okay, there's a specific dynamic problem or um, behavior over time spotted. And now we talk about elements which are um, driving this kind of behavior. But uh, I think that's also, I'm, <laughs> This is not an academic session and um, I may be also not the best person um, there, but I think from my point of view, I just would like to use the advantage of system dynamics thinking. I very much think that having this operational thinking, which is from my point of view, very well um, captured in system dynamics uh, and um, link that with um, visionary um, teleological aspirations. That's for me, my main objective so that I can get people or um, connect the strategic aims with the um, operational reality, which in majority of organizations I'm around is totally lacking. So they, they, they have, or some people say, look, we need to do that. And best case, everybody, says, cool, yeah, let's do that. But what that means, so what capabilities you need to um, uh, build up and what maybe you need to get rid of, that's quite often not um, uh, uh, taken under consideration. And then usually those who are responsible for doing it start doing whatever they did. And they usually rely on their 
routines and experience from the past. And if then they should do something different, either they are willing enough to experiment, but unfortunately in good organized organization, that's very restricted. So there is not too much space for um, doing whatever you want to do because you have usually routines and with digitalization we even get uh, usually um, digital workflows so there's less space for free um, creating designing something um, and then i think getting a better understanding why certain behaviors emerge and 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 how your thinking is um, influencing or affecting what you see and if you if you always answer with a hammer you also will just get a certain result because you always use just one tool and that's where i think getting more knowledge would be very beneficial the question is how can you teach them something when they think they left school and just have to um, administrate to to manage more and learning is something for leisure time again yeah, definitely. There might be some obstacles and on that path. I see that we got someone that got their hand up. Maybe you can unmute and, and, and ask, a, ask a question. Hi, this is Bruce. Can you hear me? I yeah. just wanted to um, add that. Thank you for answering. That was uh, my question as well. And I was really excited about what you said about design and systems understanding. And um, part of my interest is in uh, sustainability for cities. So also, I think what you said earlier about sustainability, not just being about maintaining of the past, but envisioning, uh, you know, sustainable futures. So I was curious to know in that, as you're describing, right, for people to um, become interested to, to learn the new things and to build the new models, um, you know, what, what's what been effective? What do people really, I guess, resonate with once they start to play with these, uh, these different ways of looking at things? What my experience is, what they like very much if if they get a drawing which um represents or nicely captures their situation they can connect with that and they suddenly see that a certain uh, change in one element should lead to a change in another element and for some of them that really is like wow now i understand why i always have this kind of problems um the problem is a little bit that that also requires a certain majority uh, um, um, uh, personal majority um, to to critically reflect and, and be open that oh maybe I should do things different or even I should let go of certain things while um, I think the 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 dominant paradigm is is usually different so either you're an expert and you sell your expertise so there you are always right is the one thing or you're a manager and you don't make mistakes because um, that's why you get this salary so how will you then say yes i'm open for revising my decisions or even how i see the world that's a real real challenge but only um, if you can and that's thanks for that word if you can imagine a world with is um um uh, um, motivating enough I think you have the the power and energy also to go for that and then the question is okay can we have a better tool or um, um, additional approaches helping you to better imagine what should be and also link it to what are the necessary real hard bone changes that is what I think system or that's what i'm um, trying to get uh, system dynamic use for and that's just my personal interest um, other people may have a different interest but what i quite often see also in in cities or um, in, in order to develop rich you get a list of bullet points which are all important and, and i think that's right but the question is okay what is the interdependencies between that and, and how do they affect each other? The same is true for business model um, design using Canvas. So it, it provides you on one page, the your business uh, model. But the most important thing is how good is the presenter in telling you what is happening beside uh, in between the boxes, not what is necessarily in the box. And that's, I think, what the people also appreciate if they want get, and that was also with this workshop, what they appreciated, 
that they get um, the narrative better and they understand, okay, this is the, the overall story or this is the big picture, however they call that then in the end, and they can find themselves in that and they are ones understand that this is um, the potential leverage they have. But at that same time, this is also what maybe affects them when they try to change something, which I think that's quite a lot uh, what you could achieve. Thanks for your question, Bruce. Yeah, I hope that answers your question, Bruce. Great. Um, for any others, by the way, that want to ask the question live like Bruce did, please feel free to do so like he did. Um, here we have another question from, from the Q&A uh, poll everywhere. Uh, maybe you can model a system as big as your imagine permit, imagination permits. As regards of operational results, does that depend on the power and authority of anyone in a position to make a difference? Uh, so that's related to the previous question already. I guess that's a follow-up. Um, as regards operation, it does not depend on the power. I, I yeah, <laughs> that's a very philosophical question because um, who is the leader and who is the follower, and uh, even why do we differentiate or do we do we um, uh, fragment the world or split it in somebody who leads and somebody who is following? Um, I know that the majority of organization is organized in a way that in the past we needed manpower. So we got thousands of workers in and just a few people who were um, allowed to make decisions. And usually then there was an intermediate management uh, responsible for the communication from those who made the decision to those who had to give their power to make it happen. Today, I think organizations are different. Um, we still maybe need some manpower, but mostly we need creativity and knowledge. Um, and maybe even different because in a uh, good digital organization, you have sufficient information at the boundary. Mm, so the question, does it depend on the power uh, an authority of anyone in a position to make a difference. I think it is easy if you have also power by your position to say, look, we need to do that different. At the same time, I'm very much convinced if you can get sufficient number of people joining your initiative, and by that you create some kind of momentum, you also will initiate change or um, make a difference. The question, of course, is in a well or a very strict organized organization, how is that possible? Um, but even there, if you go to the ones who are in power, they will tell you, oh, sorry, I have to follow, I don't know, the um, advice from the investor or so they even feel powerless as maybe the worker on the work floor um, who just feels dictated from the top down. So answering your question, well, I'm not sure if I answer it, uh, but um, I think in, 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 in organizations where you have a clear hierarchical uh, um, situation, if you can get those who are in power and authority to, to go for a change, that's good possible uh, to, to achieve change. Anyhow, I would say they're usually not interested in really radical change because that challenged very much their position. So if you would like to have world making innovations, meaning usually that the situation will be different, then it's usually not happening in this kind of organizations because if, if they would support change with make them obsolete, they may will lose their position of authority, which they are most often not interested in. So they will try to keep the situation stable. And that's, um, you can model that, but I'm not sure if that is helpful uh, to, to, the, um, to the situation or to the context then. That's, mm -hmm. I think, why we don't see real change in the majority of organizations, because they, they produce an outcome which is still okay for those who are in the position um, to make um, decisions and the others are maybe not good enough in organizing themselves differently uh, or um, go for take responsibility 
and maybe create and design a different world. A very interesting answer. I think that definitely answers uh, this 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 person. Um, I see here two two that are relatively linked. Um, so if you if you've been able to do all of these meetings in person, would you have done this differently? And did you find Miro uh, to be an effective online tool for con conducting these meeting benefits? I'm using Miro a lot, uh, and I think it's a great collaborative platform for me the problem with miro is that there's on the one side too much possible so you need to um, get people uh, or they, they need to make themselves familiar with miro um, at the same time some things are, might not be needed i would definitely have preferred to do that in person but less because um, I would have used then a whiteboard instead of Miro or um, a flip chart, more because I think that's also my problem with this kind of conversation. Um, I'm missing the uh, non-visual uh, um, behavior, I'm seeing how certain people react to it, because on the one side, it's, um, it's listening to what people say, on the other side is how their body is um, talking to what is being said and um, particularly when it is about trust i think it's much much easier to build trust in an in-person situation where um, everybody is together and and feel and smell each other than in an online situation where it's very easy to be distant and and maybe even um, switching off saying hey i have an important call doing that and that so but again, uh, that for example, for this specific project, it would have mean we don't have a project. So then the question was, do we want to have a project with them or not? And if we, uh, as we agreed on, yes, we want, we had to deal with the constraints uh, which are there. And I think um, there are a lot of, so also they have to, to, to work with constraints. So why should not I also agree on um, accepting certain constraints? But system dynamics, particular modeling, I would say, is a very people-intensive activity, and it makes it much easier um, to drink a coffee beside or, or have a um, side chat, which is not as easy in this kind of settings. But well, we are also connected today here because it's digital possible physical you had to come to bergen in norway and i'm quite sure that the majority won't have taken that time and effort to do it very good point very good point um another one one uh, is the most fundamental and the most difficult to achieve example of creativity when someone in power changes their mind that was relating to the power uh, that is a question about what is creativity um and I would say creativity is doing something different. Um, I'm, I'm also claiming that if you really learn, you do something different because you realize that either the way you did it is good and you should do more of that or the way you did it can be improved or should not be longer done and you do it differently than that. Um, I'm not sure if the, if the person in power needs to change their mind. I uh, also would be totally happy if the person leaves the organization um, and, and keeps their mind. Mm, my problem with digitalization and sustainability is more fundamental because I think if we continue digitalization in the tradition of the Industrial Revolution, then we are just speeding up and accelerating what, what we are doing. and, and a shitty process digitalized is still a shitty process. So you, you, you cannot complain about the outcomes and the outcomes I would say are nicely documented in books like Limits to Growth. So we, we know that since some decades, of course, we can debate how much is right or not right. But um, if you acknowledge that there are some serious side effects um, um, doing business the way we do it, and then I would say, if you just throw digital technology on it in order to do it faster or more of it, then you should not be surprised if you just get faster and more of the problems you get in from the not 
from the analog process because also in the analog process there might be problems um, and we have the possibility to find um, uh, solutions uh, workarounds in the analog world in the digital world usually is not so easy to intervene in a defined automated process so that's just running through and it's then firing the problems or unintended uh, outcomes and you have to deal with them then so um, i think what I, that's normative i know but i would love to see a different world um and i'm a little bit concerned that we the majority of us would like to see a different world but we apply technology to fix the problems and i'm not willing um uh, to change the way we uh, are um, creating the problems so i'm 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 a fiend to uh, technology that's why i'm teaching digital um, transformation but i would like to make people aware of that just digitizing so um, that there is a certain analog process or an outcome and you are just con formatting them that into a more digital um, uh, context won't change the outcome and if you and the mid i'm not sure how well you um, are aware of um, uh, the digital transformation research so the majority of projects is not successful um, the majority of digital transformation initiatives is started because they have a real problem like there's a cultural merger and that is not working so they say hey we apply a global process everybody has to work uh, against the same standardized automated rules and then they wonder that uh, this project is not successful but nobody was willing to go for the fundamental problem and unfortunately i would say that is also getting more difficult over time because the problems are getting more and more difficult wicked and that's why i like differentiation between um easy ten technical problems where you have a routine and you can apply what you know to it versus their problems you even cannot agree on what the problem is and i'm i would say the majority of problems in an organization are not technically even if you do a digital transformation the technology side is the easy one it's not as easy as maybe you assume but there is a best practice to to deal with it the the, the more challenging is mm, we call it soft or cultural issues which in the end i would say how you organize uh, and 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 how you do your business and that's not a technical question um and that's i'm would even say it's not the rational um, causal issue that's why i love this um, continuum saying okay there is a causal uh, causal explanation of the uh, system change and there's a theological because i think and that's if if i i i would say in in five years we will have a different conversation than uh, we will have in 10 years because we are already on a changing trajectory for me the the only question is do i have any chance to um proactively engage with that and, and or am i de deterministic so that i'm just like a marionette reacting to something uh i wish that the first is the case so that i can by choosing my conversation partners by um going to different situations and making explicit strategic decisions meaning i say yes to one options and no to another option i can initiate certain impulse or something like that but of course i'm quite aware of that that is not um always successful and not always will lead me to my short term desired outcomes but at the same time i'm, I'm hoping that i'm not too much uh um orchestrated by circumstances and systems around me unfortunately i'm quite aware that we build a lot of technical systems around us um and sometimes that's even technical um, organizational systems which are getting bigger and bigger and 
minimizing the design space where people can be proactive. If that is desired or not, that's again something we, we could discuss. I'm not sure if we have the time here for that. I was about to say we're three minutes until two hours, so there's still a couple of people with us. Do, do, do you still have a bit of time, Michael, to do another question? Or how, how Yeah, that's you... fine for me. We can yeah. also have an open uh, discussion afterwards on um, how it should work doing system thinking in and with organizations or in, in, in business. And I can very briefly share my view on that after answering another question and then sure. give it. Um, let's go with with this one, for example. How do you balance between variables that are very detailed and variables that are most that are more generic and represent more macro variables? This is a more technical question, I assume. Yeah. Um, mm. I I think in in general that the question what um, altitude you take. So um, do you want to have a very detailed model? Um, representing the majority of variables in the real world. The problem there is if you really represent the real world, then your model is as good as the real world for decision making because then it's as complex as reality is. So you need to find some kind of compromise getting rid of details and then and, and going for more generic variables. At the same time, I think it is still important if, if you have a variable that it is um, 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 uh, capturing um, something like 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 a stock, so um, um, and and that you can um, that it is representing also a, a causal relationship, so that it makes sense that you say, okay, this is affecting these, and then it should tell you a story and not so be so generic that you say. Yeah, yeah, could be could be this way, but I could interpret it differently. Mm, I'm not sure if this answer is helpful to how detailed or generic you should be. In general, I think the question is, and somebody also had that as a comment somewhere, what is the system? Uh, and there is, of course, no system in itself, but usually you need to agree on what are your systems boundaries um, and that again can be a discussion in a, a iteration where you see maybe we you need to change the boundaries you need to invite other people and allow different perspectives and by that maybe also different variables which are considered important but for, in order to to be constructive or um, to, 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 to have an added value you, you need to make some kind of decision there. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Uh, that's a very good way of putting it. Um, here we have another one. Can it be a good modeler not have a not apply system thinking? Can we ensure modelers are grounded in, grounded in system thinking? How do we ensure that? Ah, Charles, greetings Charles. Can you be a good modeler and not apply system thinking? Of course, uh, I can have a different model. There are sufficient linear models and approaches around, which um, has nothing to do with system thinking. Um, I, I think the um, if you want to do to, to that that modelers acknowledge um, a more systems oriented view, then I think um, they may also um, need to reflect um, critically on their own doing and, and and ask themselves why they do what they do and if that is um, leading to a more healthier system and I'm I'm not sure we quite often get caught up in in situations where we also just focus on the model and then I think that's not system thinking in itself that's very much um, operationally optimizing a given artifact um and and um yeah i i think of course we all might have been systems thinkers in the in when we have been young because we were attuned to that there's certain in, in interdependency between family and context and then i think the majority of us got an education at least in the western world 
uh, we got very much trained in science and reductive thinking, and we also got uh, incentivized for certain issues, and they are more right or wrong than others. For example, I'm always complaining about the um, innovation challenge we do um, quite often. There's always an award at the end. How is that matching with creativity if you say these are the two, one, two, three best ideas? Because I would say creativity is usually that you um, that you engage in opportunities and open the number of opportunities, not that you close it down. But if you look out what in innovation management is done, the majority is looking for the best idea. And that is judged by people who are mostly looking back to what have happened in the past and if their trajectory is in line with what this idea is suggesting. So I think mm, I'm quite sure that mm, we need to get better on that. Uh, and we can do better on that. And I think in, in the general discussion, uh, we also balance a little bit uh, the disadvantage between rational, reductive oriented people towards more systems oriented people. I hope that helps, Charles. <laughs> That's a very good answer. Um, there's still tons of questions coming up here, but I think I'll sort of clean them up because this, this we did. Uh, this we did as well earlier. This we did it earlier as well. Um, this one we did as well. We can hide it. Uh, is here. Are the are there examples of a challenge that snacks could be extended to for the learning in the future? Are there examples of a challenge that system dynamics would be extended to the learning of the future? Now, I always like, um, that's also the reference on my slide uh, by Peter Singhi, where um, Jürgen Randers explains the limits to growth model and um, how he continued the work. And, and he takes the perspective of, we try to model the context, the situation and come up with an explanation and maybe even recommendations how it can be uh, done better. Why? That is at least my interpretation of what Peter Singhi uh, says. Peter Singhi says he has a different view to it. Um, and, and of course, we can try to fix the problem. And fixing the problem means that we work hard, that the problem gets away. Or we can work for creating a solution. But that's a totally different um, um, intention. So um, if you go for a solution, then you also appreciate that there are problems. And I think that um, where that is done is um, where you find um, system dynamics in in, in in situation where the people look for, OK, how might something else um, be possible? And, and they're not looking for a better explanation of what is going on. They are looking for um, how is my uh, Weltanschauung, my mental model, limiting my view on how the world works. And I think if we talk about uh, micro worlds, then maybe the intention was um, to support learning. but the majority of us is unfortunately uh, just thinking within the in, in the in this uh, model system and in the um, represented world and it is not so easy to to make the learners uh, the the experience the the modeler of the micro world mates so i think when when that's what sermon also said that most models are wrong some are better um, that the real advantage of learning as those people who do the modeling and less those people who are then using the model to check how well does it fit with their worldview. They also might learn something, but if the model is too far away from their representation, usually they skip the model and say, hey, look, that's not my world and there's no learning taking place. So that's where I think that when we are willing to, to lean into the future for learning purpose, system dynamics is a very good 
approach, methodology, philosophy to do that. But if we have a different aspiration, if we lean into the world for better leading, controlling and steering it, then I would say maybe then we are not open to learning and letting go. And then whatever approach you apply um, is insufficient. Nice, very good, very good. Um, here we start one from Dennis. Uh, as we got the authority question, thank you. But what about social change, the realm of politics? Yeah, Dennis, I think you're referring to a certain context here. Um, so what is politics? Is it something uh, external to us or do I need to take an indigenous point of view and, 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 and think about that politics is, is me and my friends, um, is what I, I make. And um, maybe um, that's the question, do I observe the system um, or am I part of the system as the observer? Um, and if, if I interpret the question correct, then it, it sounds for me a little bit, do I have sufficient possibility, um, opportunities to, to, to make an impact in, in politics? And I would say in the ideal world, I think the authority is elected. Uh, so of course you can make an impact there. Um, and if the authority, if you, well, I'm from Germany, um, we had real authorities uh, and we also had a very well working um, bureaucracy. So everybody said what he's doing was right and uh, no fault on my side because I just follow the rules. Um, um, and we got then something like a dictatorship. Uh, there, of course, it's very different to change something. At the same time, I think it is those who um, who are interested in um, in caring for their environment, not necessarily just the um, ecological or, or, or um, biological environment. It's also the the social environment, and if those are willing to engage with other people and maybe also animals on okay how can we live uh, in a in a in a proper way with each other then it is always about social change because it's always changing so there's no no social change possible like there's no no communication um, if it is something which is given and a set then of course um that is challenging um, to intervene there. I prefer the indigenous point of view. I think I like that too. Uh, very interesting. Um, here, another one. How do you find uh, that one? We got. We got already. Hide it. Uh, two questions left. Are there examples of change challenge that, that we that we already had too? Last one then. If I only live in a developing country where technology and digitalization have not been uh, to touch in our area, is the sort of continuing digitalization still relevant for me to study? I, I would say definitely. Um, you should start something which you like is um, close to your interest. Um, and you should not study technology or digitalization because you think that is um, recent or um, a buzzword. Um, at the same time, I think that um, nowadays we talk about digital and digital strategy, digital transformation. In the end, I would say it's again coming down to transformation, um, strategy, and the digital will be included because we also don't talk about an Excel strategy or Excel leadership just because Microsoft invented Excel um, uh, calculation or a table software. Um, if you claim that your country is not too much touched or your area by technology, that might be the case. I cannot judge from here where I am. But 
you are listening to this kind of conversation due to digital technology and digital advanced um, opportunities. Um, and I'm, I doubt that you won't be impacted by what is going on with these new technologies. It's like somebody invented a wheel and somebody invented printing. And now we have the possibility to view the world differently in, in O's and ones, and that will definitely um, have many, many um, uh, that have disruptive potential. Because I think we won't live in a world tomorrow or the day after that. I um, uh, started to live in. I'm now close to fifty years. Fifty years before, so I used emails i use skype and my my kids they grow up with using emails and skype that's for them normal while I, um, I got introduced in that as a student and even at that time it were just a few people using emails so i could not send emails to everybody nowadays my students complain about emails because they have other communication channels and if i'm i don't know what Chat GDP or Google brand uh, will um, make possible. But I think this tool will make a different world possible, like a wheel or hammer made a different world possible. Um, but the, the funniest thing is that nobody of us will know how this world will look like in five or 10 years, um, because that's that's in the beginning uh, and that's why i think the topic is so important so if i would recommend you what should you study then i definitely would say study something like um, system dynamics which gives you the possibility to to have an eye on technology and digitalization while at the same time uh, you might also consider that there is more than just technology which is relevant for you um i don't think that just studying the technology um, is, is is a good start. But if you if if you have a big interest in getting better in in, in, in coding and in, 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 uh, um, algorithms or stuff like that, then yes, do that. Um, but be aware of that that is very uh, specific aspect, and it's embedded in a bigger context. And you can also study the bigger context and still be interested in the technology. Wonderful. That makes it, that comes to, to a conclusion. Um, it's a quite, quite a good way to, to, to finish this off. Do you have final words that you want to share that you haven't had the chance to, to do so yet? Um, before we wrap it up. Yeah, I'm very happy to um, have the um, possibility to share my thoughts. Um, I, I was a little bit naive because I thought it is easier to do, but talking to a silent um, audience, um, getting my thoughts explained easily to my Miro um was not as easy as i thought anyhow i learned a lot uh, getting your questions um, that's why i'm very happy taking this opportunity and i'm also happy that you invited me um to to have this talk here if somebody would like to have a more concrete specific answer to something i raised i'm i'm happy to be available either via email or another um, zoom session um, later so just send me an email. I wish you all the best in Norway or um, America um, and keep this good work up and <laughs> have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for this kind, kind words. And thanks for all the, the perfect answers and the beautiful presentation you made and the time you've kept for us here and for all the, all the people that joined us here. Uh, Fernando, do you have a few words from the Snack Society that you want to just say thank you to you, Henry Advent, and of course to Michael. Thank you so much for joining us today and everyone. And go to systemdynamics.org slash seminar series for uh, to see the upcoming seminars. <laughs> Good words. And for, to Michael's point about studying system dynamics, don't hesitate to look it up as well. Uh, the University of Bergen has a master's in system dynamics. So feel free to look it up and, and join us in this adventure. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, Michael, again. Thank you, everyone. And uh, have a pleasant day.
Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.